Hey, I'm Dan, and this is Dan's Planes. Welcome to my Hangar 9 P40. Several years ago, I needed to recover the front end because the covering came up. Well, the covering came up because there was so much oil on the wood because of the glow engine. So I used K2R. You can get at Ace Hardware and online that you can spray the wood with and it'll suck the oil out of the wood. So I did that where I could and then I actually replaced the wood where I needed to where it was real bad and the oil just wasn't coming out. So I replaced it all and then I got um, a filler put on there. So as far as I know, I just need to sand the filler and monocoat, then put the engine back on. And lastly, I have mechanical retracts, which are always a pain in the butt. So I bought a set of uh, electric retracts, and then I have a set of electric retracts left over from my Corsair that might work as well. So I've been really itching to get back to this plane, especially to um, fly this one and get used to it before I take out my CY model, or no, my Sky Shark. P40 being such a beautiful plane. So we'll do some some vids on this coming up. Here she is with the filler sanded and cleaned off. So I've done the bottom monocoat, or I guess this is hangar nine. Is I don't know if that's aura cover or aura coat. Whatever it is, I can't stand this stuff compared to Monocoat. It, um, it wrinkles very quickly if you get it um, a little too hot. Otherwise, you don't get it hot enough to put it down, and the life on it just doesn't seem to last long, at least on glow planes. All right, now sides and top. Oh, notice on this engine mount, I've got the anti-vibration engine mount. This plane has a Sato 100. It's supposed to be a 60 to 90 size plane, but lots of people do the Sato 100s. And then it's also got the Kelio exhaust, which I think is totally cool. The front is now covered. Being a recovering perfectionist, I'm realizing that this airplane, I'm more worried about speed getting it in the air rather than worrying about perfection of making the repairs look brand new. Because number one, this airplane is definitely over 10 years old. I've flown it many, many years, which is why it was so oil soaked. I had a lot of fun with it. And although I was fortunate enough to score another new one that somebody put together um, down at the Perry, Georgia swap meet, um, this one you know, already has the engine mount, already has the servos in and all that. So there's no reason why I can't just make her airworthy again and get hopefully a couple more seasons out of her. So not worried about some wrinkles in the covering. I'm just worried about getting it done and getting out there to fly with it to practice before I, I fly the new P40. I forgot that I had bought a new cowl for this. I don't remember where I was able to find it. I had also bought... Cali graphics for the shark's mouth for the old cowl, thinking I might strip it down and paint it myself, but man, it's so cracked and beat up, and it's actually heavier than the new cowl, which I swear is because it's got so much oil in it and in the paint. So, um, more progress. Now the engine needs to go back on, and I'm going to have to cut that cowling where the exhaust pipes come out. Okay, Sato parts everywhere. What am I doing? So this was the original engine that came off of my P40, but I did not put um, automatic transmission fluid in it, and it sat on my shelf for years. So I don't know what you call this, but I think it's a camshaft cover. Um, and then these black things are where the... Um, uh, the rods go in 
and those rods are not moving up and down. So I've taken as much of the engine apart as I can, and now I'm trying to get this off so I can clean it um, and get it moving again. It's um, moving if I spin it, but it's not moving rods up and down, so I have to see um, what's in there. So I'm I'm not able to get this off. I've tried tapping it on the wood. Um, I think it should just come off because of my other spare parts engine that I had taken apart. Um, I mean, there's just a gasket on it, and then this thing comes out. So I'm not sure why it's not coming out. So next step is to heat it. Um, and maybe that'll expand it and allow it to come apart. But that's to get this engine going that was originally in the P40. So while I'm doing that, I'm, I went into my spare Sato engines, and I have one that's um, ready to run, so I'm going to use that on the P40. Then I have another one that still has the Kelio exhaust on it, um, for the Spitfire, and it's ready to run. So you can see here the exhaust, um, the exhaust gets wire braided down to a piece down here that's on the engine mount uh, bolt, and then you twist it. So this is all set up and ready for the next Spitfire that I do. So I don't want to use that one. Otherwise, I've got this spare parts one, and I've got this one where um, it's movable and everything, but the muffler port is stripped, so it needs another one put in. So I haven't sent that out to repair yet, waiting until I might have something that might need it. So I think I'm okay still because I've got this for the P40, that for the Spitfire, then this will become a spare engine once I get that cam cover off and get things moving again. So I think I'm sitting good, but just wanted to share where I'm at so far. We got to get that engine and the Telio exhaust for the P40 um, put on there. That's all for now. Okay, I was able to remove the cam after heating at a little over 200 degrees, probably about 215 for 20 minutes. So I got that to pop off. Of course, the gasket is toast now. I had to use a, a small blowtorch on, I think it was this one, because the plunger thing that's in there just was not moving. But now both of them are moving, so I'm ready to put it back together. So I learned from Aero Scott, if you... Um, Put some oil around the surface where you want to make the gasket and then press it down on some card stock then you know what to cut out um, you know you can just use card stock as your gasket same thing with the valve covers so a pretty cool little trick so i'm going to cut that out and put this whole thing back together now this is back together now except for the um valve cover gaskets because I need to check the timing on this and I can't remember how to do it so I'm going to have to call Aero Scott. I think you put a wood dowel through the spark plug hole and you turn the engine to find the top dead center. Once you find the top dead center then you're adjusting these screws to something or nuts. Um, to something so I'm not sure so this is now mounted and man this thing was a pain in the butt I don't know how I got four bolts in there before but this bolt hole um, you've got you've got the muffler you have to go through then you've got the engine mount you have to go through and then you have to get into this hole which is threaded and it's like a 16th inch off. I don't know how. I, I don't know how the other engine was able to, to have it. But don't tell anybody. I'm just going to go with three bolts on this. Because um, I can't drill and re-tap for that 16th of an inch. Um, 
I don't want to throw away these anti-vibration engine mounts that were also expensive. So don't tell the motor police, but we're just going to go with three bolts, three lock nuts. It'll be fine. So there's that. I didn't realize after I got it on, I didn't realize that the carburetor linkage was on the wrong side. So I had to reverse the carburetor. So did that. Going to have to realign the carburetor opening for sure. But anyway, that's that's where she's at. The engine is on. So I've had this engine off and on several times trying to get all four bolts to mate up through the bolt holes. And I just couldn't get that, that one to work. Uh, but now I was looking at it and I'm, and I'm eyeballing it and I'm thinking the exhaust stacks look too low. They look like they should be up about here. And I went ahead and tried to put the the old cowl back on and sure enough the exhaust stacks seem low and then also you can see through here that I'm hitting um, the valve covers. So what I did, I took this engine off years ago when I put this plane aside so I could get all the oily wood out. Um, but I don't know that I took a picture of it. So instead I looked at the assembly of my Spitfire engine with the Kelio exhaust and I copied how it was attached to um, the engine mounts. But I think what I'm going to have to do is put the engine on the top of the engine mount, still keep it inverted, put the engine on top and then the Kelio exhaust on top of that. Um, that should raise um, that'll raise these and raise this. So I think that'll put me then in the ballpark. Then I've got to take the new cowling that I've got and get it cut out for the exhaust ports and the air intakes. So that's the next plan of attack. Okay, I've changed the order of things. So I did, I previously had the stand the engine mount, and then the engine, then the Kelio exhaust. I've now done engine, Kelio exhaust, I'm sorry, mount, Kelio exhaust, engine. So I looked online and somebody else had one of these, and I saw that they had it mounted the other way, engine stand, engine, Kelio exhaust, but, um, you know, that made the exhaust stacks too low. Now, the exhaust stacks go right where they need to. So, that's perfect. And I'm no longer hitting my valve covers on on the... My camera quit with an error on that last clip. So, hopefully it'll, it'll work with me here. So, now I need to cut out the exhaust ports. So, I line up my cowl. So everything is is straight like it needs to be. A little bit there. Um, straight. This part goes straight back. And then centering this in this hole. So then I mark on the sides where I need to start cutting the exhaust. And I noticed on my new cowl and the old cowl, interesting on the right side it cuts away the eyeball but on the left side it leaves half the eyeball so it's kind of cockeyed but both of them are like that so now I'm going to cut away a section I'm not going to cut the whole thing away I'm going to cut away a section make sure I'm on the right track put it back onto the airplane and then draw the next part that I need to cut away so to cut away I'm using one of these guys, um, any of these cutting tools will work. And then grinding, I'm using this around the edges. So I use the tip for the corners and then I hand sand any straight corners. And then I just use this going around uh, all the edges. Then I use a um, emery board for um, removing 
the little pieces of strands of glass that's left over after you um, after you grind it down. So here we go. Now all the fiberglass is cut away so the exhaust stacks are sticking out and they're not touching the fiberglass so there won't be a vibration there damaging the fiberglass. This cowl was already cracked um, here when I pulled it out of the box and it started to crack here because you have to pull the sides out to get over um, these exhaust stacks to be able to um, pull them out. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm drilling a hole to fit a 440 bolt and then I'm drilling a bigger hole underneath and I'm going to install these guys which are, I don't know what you call them, let's see, uh, number 440 threaded inserts. What they are is um, they are metal receptacles for the 440 type screws. So this gets screwed into the wood and epoxied or CA'd. Um, you screw the 440 into it, then you screw that into the wood with CA. Then when it's cured, then you back out the bolt. And what I would do is have a um, washer, a rubber washer, when I screw the 440 bolt in. And this is going to help because I had constant problem with the old cowl where from from vibration the screw holes would keep enlarging and then you know creeping into elongated holes so having a screw with a washer can help that or if you can get one of those i don't even know what they're called of grommet maybe that um that fits inside the hole and then has the same thing as a rubber washer on top and on bottom, but it's all one single piece. Um, so if you can get those, that that helps a lot. But I have trouble finding those in in a small size for like 440. So if you guys know of any source of that, please enter the comments below. And if any of you guys have had one of these Hangar 9 planes, P40 or Spitfire, um, give your experience down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. This P40 I flew for years and years and years, you know, until it just got so oily I had to fix it and got tired of the landing gear that um, was always mechanical. Now I've got, like, electric gear, so we'll, um, we'll get this going next. Get those, get those holes done. That'll complete the cowl work so I can get the prop and the spinner put back on. And then I got to put the gas tank in and I guess the battery back in. So get all the fuselage stuff done. And then I just got to swap out the landing gear in the, in the wings. I've talked to Aero Scott now and he refreshed me on how to do this. So you're going to turn the crank um, until the piston is um, top dead center. There are two times it's drop dead, top dead center. What you don't want is bringing the piston up and if you wiggle this, the rocker arms will um, teeter totter. If that happens, go another 360 degrees and then they won't. And push down on this, push down on this, and that gives you what your gap is between the spring and the rocker arm. So that gap, he recommends on a Sato 100 using 0.004 or 4 thousandths. Um, 4 thousandths. So you can buy this kit from Sato that has the Allen wrenches that fit and then the um, spacers. So you can do this. So once you um, get that space... You, um, you want to take the nut and take it up to the top first, and then you want to screw the screw down with the Allen wrench. Um, screw it up and or down until you can fit that four thousandths of an inch um, spacer through each sides of these. Then when you do that, you then bring the lock nut down 
lock it in place, not, not cranking on it too hard, but firmly in place. Then you're ready to put the um, valve covers back on and then she's ready to store. She's got oil in her and she's all moving and ready to store. I'd, you know, I'd like to see these move a little bit better, but um, if I had the time, I would take it out and run it on a test stand and then soak it in oil before, um, before packing it away. But I'm going to pack it away and hope for the best. Hope to not have to take it apart again and try to get the parts moving. Okay, so we've got the brass inserts put in. So now I can put on the cowl with the um, 440 bolts to lock it in. And good news, I was looking to see if I had any more of these brass inserts. And I came across rubber grommets I had bought that are for uh, 440 size. So this was the info on them. I knew I wouldn't be able to remember where I got them from. But you make a one quarter inch drill hole and that fits these perfectly. And then these fit 440. So that's handy. Now we've got to put the gas tank back in, organize the receiver. Um, we'll have to get a battery put in there. Well, we have two problems. Number one, um, two of the holes match up and appear to be good, but the third one does not match up by about a 32nd of an inch. I just cannot get a bolt to feed in there. So I'd either have to widen this hole, which is not a good idea based on experience. Um, the hole would just become wider than what I do to it just from vibration. So I want to keep this grommet in place. So that means redoing this, which I've epoxied that brass insert in there. And I need to drill basically at the top of that brass insert. So I need to dig out that insert, fill the hole with wood, then um, redo the hole and the block behind. But then I look at this, and I don't know how in the hell I did this, but connecting the other two bolts to hold the cowl on, somehow I am way off center, and I don't get it, man. I just don't get it. I was centered, I thought. I, I brought the, the cowl down so it would be a nice tight fit up top. And I just don't get it. So the problem, I believe, is this bolt. It seems like it needs to go forward. By making it go forward, the cowling will go forward. So these will stick out more, and then this would be more centered. So two of the three holes that I've done are garbage. So that feels good. Love redoing work. That's my favorite pet peeve of all of them. So... Time to redo. I've dug around the brass inserts with this Dremel tool. Then I used some scrap balsa to fill what I had taken out. I've five minute epoxied it in place. So we'll wait for that to cure a bit and then go back and re-drill the holes. Um, we'll have a little bit of touch up of monocoat because we don't want uh, oil getting in there. So probably Monaco first and then, then do the holes. While I waited for the epoxy to cure on those brass inserts, I went ahead and put the fuel tank in. Um, to do that, I, I label the three fuel tubings that are coming out of it because once you stick it through the firewall, 
and then you've got these three sticking out. One is really long, so you know that's the fill. That's easy. But the other two, muffler and carburetor, it's easy to get those two confused. So I know the labels will get oily and will slide all around, but um, it's just a little bit easier for me since they're not different colors. Then I went through and I relabeled. I removed my masking tape labels and relabeled this using ailerons as color blue and white on everything else. White for the retracts since... Um, Blue and white will be the only ones available, so it'll be easy to tell um, which one's the retracts by color. So I need to <clears throat> affix that to here. Um, the battery is going to go here as a starting point. And now, after many, um, many adding and removing of the cowl and doing these brass inserts one at a time and checking it um, as I go along. Now we're nice and straight and here we've got a little bit of downright um, in the motor which we would expect to have so um, the cowling is good to go. So now it's time for retracts and the only thing I'm concerned about with them is if they are long enough. If I remember they might have been right at the end of being able to accept an axle so we'll find out in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dan from Dan's Planes. I just want to share some content about RC planes, something I've been passionate about since childhood. I'm hoping I can teach something to someone. I can start some discussion and learn some things from others. So let's just have some fun and learn some things together. If you enjoyed what you watched, it would really help me out if you could like, subscribe, and share. And if you feel that it helped you out in some way, or it might help future viewers, I'd really appreciate it if you'd visit my Patreon page and become a patron. It's like throwing a dollar tip into a guitar case when you pass by. It helps to, to fund future content and future projects that I'll be working on. I plan to show some past content. I have some other flights and I have some fly-in events that I've been to. And I also plan to show future flights and future repairs, as well as building ARFs and, if I can ever get back to it, building my top flight uh, Spitfire. So there's a lot of content to come, but it's, it's viewers like you that are able to support what I'm doing. And by doing that, I'm able to spend more time creating that content in the future. So I'd really appreciate it. But either way, thanks for watching, and thanks for any support, and I wish you blue skies and good speed.